Welcome to EC Electronics. Hope you are doing great. So in today's video, we are going to see some interview questions on digital electronics subject. So whether it is a company which is related to uh, embedded system or a uh, VLSI, the digital electronics questions are very, very uh, crucial when it comes to interviews. All the interviewers, if it is an electronics based company, ask you some digital electronics questions because it is actually the favorite subject of a lot of people out there. So in today's video, we are going to see some interview questions on digital electronics. We'll be seeing some basic questions in this part, which is part one. In part two, we'll be seeing little bit advanced question. If you want more questions on digital electronics, please mention that in the comment session. We'll do it as a series. So stay tuned. Please watch this video till the end. Also, if you are seeing the channel for the first time, please subscribe to the channel. In this channel, I post job updates career guidance and subject videos on electronics. So what is the difference between latch and flip-flop? These are two terms which are often heard together and we study them together. There are various types of latches and flip-flops. The basic or the most important difference between these two are latches are level triggered. Okay, they are level triggered means whenever the input is changing, the output is also changing. Okay, whereas in case of uh, flip-flops, they are edge triggered. Edge means the control signal is also has uh, that is uh, the control signal is also having a prominent role in the flip flop. Whenever the control signal is changing, then only the output is getting affected. So this type of triggering is called edge triggering. So edge triggering means the control signal only uh, changes its state. The cha the state is being changed uh, by the control signal. Okay. So this type of triggering. Whenever the control signal is uh, changing, then only the output is getting affected. That type of triggering is called edge triggering. But when there is a change in input and then the output is getting changed means it is called level triggering. Okay, So uh, flip-flops are edge triggered whereas latches are level triggered. Okay, So that is the basic difference between latch and flip-flop. Anyway, we study them uh, together in digital electronics subject because they are pretty much related to each other okay so that is the basic difference between latch and flip-flop it mainly different differs in triggering okay next question what is a binary number system we have studied about various type of number systems in our channel itself there is a separate video on number system if you haven't watched it please go watch that lot of people lot of people have commented that it is tremendously useful now, here the question is, what is a binary number system? So, whenever you are putting a number uh, in the bracket as 2 base, in the base you put 2, it is called binary number. And in binary numbers, you can only see 1s and zeros. So, this should be your answer. It should be precise and it should be clear that a number given to the base of 2 is called a binary number. And in that binary number, you can only find 1s and zeros. Okay. So that is the second question. Now going to the next question, which is which gates are called universal gate and what are its advantages? Now, we generally call a gate as universal gate means if we can construct any type of gate with that gates means they are called universal gate. The universal gates are NAND and NOR means with the help of NAND or NOR, we can actually create any type of gate or any type of uh, circuit okay so that is the advantage of universal gate means we can actually create uh, this universal gates which are NAND and NOR to form any other gates okay so that's why they are called universal means we can create anything from it it is called universal gates so which are the universal gate NAND and NOR are the universal gates the next question is, what is fan in and fan out? So this is a very famous question in your college viva or whether it is in your interview. Okay. Now what is fan in? Fan in means consider there is a gate. Okay. The maximum number of inputs you can connect to the gate without degrading the voltage levels of the gate. That is a very simple uh, explanation of a fan in. Means the number of inputs which you can connect to the gate is called fan in, but the voltage levels should not get affected. That is fan in. Okay, now what is fan out? So consider that there is a gate. The gate is being connected to other gate. Means the output from the first gate is connected to the second uh, gate's input. Okay, now in this case, 
fan out is a maximum number of inputs that the gate can drive by maintaining the output levels constant. I'll explain it once again. So consider that there is one gate, then there is another gate. Okay. So I'm going to connect the output of the first gate to the input side of the second gate. So the first gate is actually driving the inputs of the second gate. Okay. So in this case, the maximum number of inputs of the second gates that the first gate can drive without actually affecting its input levels. That is called fan out. So you can actually consider this as the output of the first gate itself, but it is driving the second gate's input. Okay. So the maximum number of inputs that a gate can drive without affecting its input levels. Okay. So that is called a fan out. I'll say it once again as a proper definition. So a fan out is a maximum number of same inputs of the same IC family that a gate can drive maintaining the output levels of the gate within a specified limit. Okay. So this is actually related with the input and the output of a gate, which is fan in and fan out. It is a very famous question in a lot of interviews. Next one, again, a very commonly heard term. What is De Morgan's law? So De Morgan's law is a, you can say it is the, uh, the, 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 the root, the root of Boolean algebra. A lot of uh, expressions we can simplify with the help of this law or theorem, which is called De Morgan's theorem. Okay. So De Morgan's theorem, it is very simple. There is two expressions in De Morgan's theorem. So it states that a dot b the whole complement equal to a complement plus b complement that is the first expression the second one is a plus b the whole complement equal to a complement into b complement okay so this is actually connected with the the product of sum and sum of product terms anyway we don't go into the deeper things now because it is a this is a basic video so these are the two expressions uh, which is called as d morgan's theorem okay so this is a De, De Morgan's theorem and it is very useful uh, when you do Boolean expression simplification and logic gate simplification and all. Okay, so that is the next question which is De Morgan's theorem. The next question which we are going to see is, the next question is again connected with ICs. What are the characteristics of digital IC? How can all we characterize a digital IC? How can we classify or characterize its performance based on what all things? Okay, the first one is propagation delay. So the input of an IC is getting passed through it and it is passing to the output side. Okay, now how much delay is there, which is called propagation delay. Next one is power dissipation or power consumption. So whenever we are going for uh, digital electronics or VLSI, our main aim is to reduce the power consumption, right? That's why we are actually minimizing the size of ICs and uh, and circuits right so power dissipation plays a very important role so that is the second uh, characteristics of a digital ic which is power dissipation then fan in and fan out we have already discussed about these two terms next one is noise margin okay the amount of noise uh, how much there it is when the input is passing through the output side the noise should be minimum right so noise margin is also very important so these are the main characteristics of a digital ic the next one is again a basic question. What are the different types of number system? So we have, as I've told you, we have done separate video on various number system, how the numbers are getting converted from one number system to the other number system, what all steps you have to do. These all things I have made as a separate video. You can definitely watch that video and I would strongly recommend it. Anyway, the, day, the various type of number system are first one, binary number system, decimal number system, octal number system, hexadecimal number system. Okay. These are some uh, important types of number system. What is the difference, uh, difference between combinational circuit and sequential circuit? This is two terms which we often hear in digital electronics. Okay. What is combinational circuit? What is sequential circuit? Combinational circuits are circuits in which there is no memory required. I'll be including an image here. For combinational circuits like MUX, DMUX, encoder, decoder, etc. or adders or subtractors, whatever input you are going to give, 
it will be taken to the output side it will be performing some logical operations uh, and it will be giving you an output memory is not required for example the case of mux what will be uh, what type of combinations we are giving in the input side based on the select lines you will be getting a output there is no memory required okay now when considering the sequential circuits like shift registers or counters there the previous state is also important so memory is required okay so talking about the speed combination circuits are faster but due to the presence of this memory elements and due to little bit complexity sequential circuits are slower and also uh, talking about the design difficulty combinational circuits are easy to design sequential are little bit difficult to design clock for combinational circuits clock input is not required but uh, for sequential clock input is required combinational circuits like mux or dmux there is no memory required but for counters we know there is memory elements or memory is required okay previous states uh, or previous uh, output uh, or input is also been affecting the working of the circuit so the examples of combinational circuits i will repeat once again mux dmux encoder decoder adder subtractor these are combinational circuits whereas uh, shift registers and counters are sequential circuits okay so this is the difference between combinational circuit and sequential circuit next moving on to the next question which is what is a k map okay so k map is a very commonly heard term what is k map k map is actually the pictorial representation of a truth table or a logical expression okay so in k map you can find various cells each term is represented as min term or max term and each term is represented with the help of these cells okay now by this method we can directly reduce the boolean function that is the main uh, attraction of this k map or uh, karnov map it is expansion of k map so this k map will be a representation or a pictorial representation we know it is like a table okay there is various cells and each cell will be representing some terms in the boolean expression and based on the value present in it zeros or ones we will be uh, combining the values and then we'll be reducing the boolean expression or logical expression okay this type of pictorial representation is called a k map i'll be showing a k map here also you can see what is a k map okay the next question is what is a flip flop and what are the different types of flip flops used you can actually answer this question in a very simple way flip flop are one type of a sequential circuit we have already seen what are sequential circuits right now this uh, uh, flip flop can store one bit okay so this uh, it will be storing one bit at a time so this type of sequential circuit is flip flop what are the different type of flip flops used jk flip flop sr d flip flop and toggle flip flop names should be very clear jk sr toggle or t and d okay so these are the types of flip flops generally used in digital circuit the next question is related with number system it is also very important because uh, it is actually the representation uh, in number system okay so what is the difference between bit nibble byte and word a person who is studying digital electronics should be knowing this because it is very the next question is what is the difference between bit nibble byte and word okay so bit means one uh, it will be only having one digit can be zero or one that is called a bit single bit okay it can be zero or one because it is digital electronics bit means can be zero or one now what is nibble nibble means four bits together it will be combination of four bits four four bits taken together will be say it as a nibble byte means just like we have studied in uh, 80511 byte of data or one uh, byte it is eight bits eight bits is called one byte now word word is a combination of various or several amount or several number of bytes so this is the difference between bit nibble byte and a word okay so these type of questions are very very important because when you are designing something in digital electronics or in digital circuits this uh, size of the data or size of the word or size of the uh, variable really matters
So the next question is, what is the difference between Von Neumann and Harvard architecture? So this is a uh, very commonly asked question in all interviews and in uh, even in my interview preparation videos, I have talked about these questions more. So uh, what is the difference between Von Neumann and Harvard architecture? So it mainly differs in the arrangement of memory. Von Neumann is considered to be a little bit primitive uh, type of architecture. In Von Neumann, both the instructions and the data are stored together on a single place. Okay, so the, uh, the possibilities of congestion uh, is more when uh, there is time for accessing the memory because the data is also stored in one place and instructions are stored together with the data. So it's not considered as a very best practice, but it is one of the uh, what do you say? You can say the primitive type uh, architecture. Harvard architecture is a little bit more organized where instructions are stored as separate memory, data is stored in a separate memory. So this is the main difference between Harvard and von Neumann architecture and also for accessing data and instruction there is two separate BES. Okay, so that is uh, the difference between von Neumann and Harvard architecture. So that's all about today's video. We have seen some uh, questions from digital electronics. Hope you all are uh, finding these questions useful. It will be surely useful for your interviews or even in your competitive examinations. We'll be continuing this series. If you want me to put more and more videos on various interview preparations, if you want some other topics, please mention that in the comment section. We'll be doing that. So if you found the video useful, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.